My name is Brayden and this is Gaston, my 1990 Ford Econoline. My whole bed set up here, uh, it's four inch memory foam mattress and it just pops up like this. And a little hook and eye latch there. And this slides right in to turn it into a couch. And then all my bedding actually conveniently fits right under here. It's a little bit of a process, but what isn't when you live in a van? I have these drawers here that slide out. I built these little covers into them so I can actually use them as a desk because um, I work remotely. And then just a lot of general storage here. This is the, the garage. Uh, I got my 200 amp hour battery that is powered by a 300 watt solar system on the roof. Over here, I have my whole kitchenette, um, the sink with just a little battery powered faucet. Uh, I got a mini fridge here. Uh, this fridge is a Black & Decker fridge and it's very energy efficient. Um, it's powered by AC and it uses less of my battery than most direct current fridges that I looked at, which is pretty sweet. Um, and then just a pantry stocked full of food here. Cool thing about building your own place is uh, I can build a cabinet or a compartment in my pantry that perfectly fits two boxes of cereal. So that's rad. I also have uh, this huge ceiling uh, painting that I just really wanted to highlight. That's uh, my, my friend Sam painted that for me um, and it's very gorgeous. And I have one just on the back door there as well. And I just have this, uh, this drawer here that it slides out all the way. Um, I use it as a standing desk sometimes or just like a general workstation I can cook on here. Um, and underneath is where I keep all of my clothes and some books on this side, because I'm a, a writer and an English major, so the books were non-negotiable. Um, and it all just slides right back in. Like that and I can access it from inside as well if I just slide my bed out. This is the side door here, which I use as kind of my main entrance in and out most of the time. Uh, and I just have the whole sink system uh, accessible from here. So uh, just the fresh water and the gray water. And uh, this is the part, I probably rebuilt this like three times trying to figure out how to make it work. Um, I learned a lot of this on the go. So um, yeah, I'm really glad that it worked out. I ended up finding this like hose part that was like 15 bucks and I had no idea if it would work and it ended up being perfect. So I just screwed that right into the bottom of the sink and then uh, kind of built it into the jerry can here. So when I take the gray water out, I can just screw it on there and take the tank out and then nothing spills, which is pretty sweet. Um, and I just have yeah my shoe rack here just hanging on the back of the bulkhead. The frustrating thing about these vans is that this is all you get for storage and things up front, which like there's not even cup holders. so. Um, I built this thing, this little box here. Uh, I'll move that so you can get a better look. Um, and that's just, I store like a sleeping bag in there during the summer, um, some jackets, like seasonal stuff, beach towel. Um, and then I got this little thing that I just screwed into it and that has lots of storage for just stuff while I'm driving. Great for holding snacks. Baby carrots are a really underrated road snack, which I can do because I have a fridge. So that's awesome. Um, yeah, and that's, uh, that's all of it. So I live in a van because uh, I'm moving to Victoria for the next two years of my bachelor's degree and the housing market there is just bonkers. Why would I pay a thousand plus dollars for a studio apartment that's not much bigger than this when I can just live in this? And then, you know, there's the, the philosophical kind of appeals of it as well. I have a lot of freedom. I have um, like my my family was worried about me being homeless and it's actually like the opposite like i'm really i'm a home owner i have a lot of independence like this yeah you know there's challenges that come with it but i think the uh the perks are pretty pretty awesome and then yeah especially the economical ones like my living costs are way cheaper now so i can afford to work part-time and get myself through school and have hobbies too so at this age like you have to be like pretty much always living with roommates or family um, and I don't have any family out here. My family is all uh, at least like a thousand kilometers away. So now it's much easier to get out there and visit them because I don't have to worry about like finding a bed to sleep in. Um, I can just bring my whole house down, which uh, not many people can do. On top of all that, like it's just interesting. Like it's, it's something that I think sets you apart from kind of the, the masses uh, living in an alternative dwelling. Um, so, you know, I kind of have, I have this one fact about me that I can whip out and be like, yeah, this is 
this is what makes me different. So that's, that's pretty cool. The biggest challenges of this lifestyle are, um, I would say this week in particular, the heat. Uh, it's like over 30 degrees and humid in Vancouver. Um, you know, I got the, the Max Air Deluxe in my roof. It's kind of the industry standard for these builds. And uh, yeah, it's, it's nice. I can keep the air moving, but it's just brutal living in a metal box sometimes, even with insulation. But on the bright side, my solar panels are charged. <laughs> uh, on top of that, it, like it's just kind of, um, you know, a lot of the challenges are mitigated by the fact that I am a student. So I have like a gym membership. I have a shower on campus. I have somewhere to park all day. Um, unfortunately, not overnight, but I'm also in contact with the university to try to change that because I think it's about time we allow some alternative living situations when there's housing crises all over the place here. Yeah, and then, you know, it's just like the, the missing the general home amenities. Like I don't have a shower. Um, I have to kind of ration water, power in the winter too. Um, you have to be more mindful of a lot of things, which in, in some ways is a perk too. Like it, it is a challenge, but it's also, um, you know, I live life a lot more intentionally, even with very simple things. For cost, I put in um, the, the van was a little over $4,000. Uh, and then all in all, after the conversion, I spent about $13,000 uh, altogether with everything, um, which with the rent prices over here, that'll pay for itself in a year. So if I get a year out of this thing, I'm stoked. There's a lot of different reasons to get into van life and a lot of reasons that appeal to, to different people. So I think if I were to recommend it, like it's, it's tough to say because you do need to be a certain kind of person to do it. Um, you know, some people like they can't let go of like the amenities uh, that you get from conventional uh, living situations, which is totally fine because that, that is a big adjustment. Um, but I think if you are willing to let go of those, like this is, this is worth trying at least for a little while because I think uh, I mean, especially if you build it yourself, like you get a lot of personal growth out of the process and and the the daily life. So, I think anyone who uh, like if if life sort of like feels mundane, like maybe a big change, like this is good. Or if you have reasons to to step away from a conventional living situation, like I don't know, it's it's partially even a political thing for me too because I just don't want to throw all my money at landlords, right? Like when I get a paycheck, I want to to enjoy that. So um, yeah, you know, if you just, if you want more independence in your lifestyle, like this is this is a huge way to get it. I've learned a lot uh, through this, this kind of lifestyle, not even so much with like living in the van because I've only been doing that for a few weeks, but just the building process because I did a lot of it myself. I, I had some friends who uh, were very kind and lent me their, their hands or their expertise um, in a lot of different areas. But for, for the most part, like I was out here on like evenings and weekends, just kind of toiling away at it and learning through, through trial and error um, how to do a lot of this. Because I, I was never a manual labor kind of guy. Like I mentioned earlier, like I'm a writer and an English major. <laughs> like this is, uh, this is not really the kind of thing that I do. Um, so I think I learned a lot about just like the learning process, if that makes sense, figuring out how to put all this together, um, what works and what doesn't, just kind of by doing the process. Um, and I guess just by extension of that, like what people are, are capable of when they set their minds to it. Cause um, yeah, it was a lot of hard work, but I got it done. I'm living in a place now that I'm really happy about and, and proud of. Uh, one thing that I definitely didn't think about enough is maybe like there there is a sort of like stigma about it still um, especially in you know my my day job I work with like a lot of like professionals and I gotta like be careful in like zoom meetings <laughs> and, like blur my background and stuff like that because uh, you know a lot of them would probably think it's weird that I live in a van I mean that's something that I hope will like get better um, and that you know I can do my part to like educate people on because like I'm not <laughs> I'm not like this like weird dude <laughs> who's like doing weird stuff in here. Like, I don't know, this is just my house. <laughs> like, yeah, expectations about getting into van life are, I mean, you know, there's often like, it's romanticized a lot. You know, you see like the Instagram influencers that are like filming from the top of a mountain and stuff. And it's like, that doesn't, that's not really the case a lot of the time, at least not for people like me who are doing it as like a living situation while I live the, the, the rest of my life, right? Like I'm in the city, I'm finding places to sleep every night. Um, yeah, there's not like, and you know, there is the romantic stuff like that for sure. Like the freedom is awesome. Um, and you know, I will be driving through the mountains like next week to, to go visit home for a while. And I'm sure there'll be some lovely views, but 
it's really like that's not the daily life. And then unexpected realities are uh, yeah, the, the Gatorade bottle. If you know, you know. <laughs> I don't know. There's lots of unexpected realities that come with it. And it's just kind of you, you, you face them as they come and they just become part of a new life. It's just like moving into any new place. Like, you know, the, the last house I lived in, there was rats in my ceiling. <laughs> and, you know, that's a place that like a landlord was renting to me. So, yeah, there's always unexpected challenges, but you just... You, you deal with them or you accept them and that's that's life anywhere uh, another unexpected kind of adjustment is just um, how much slower and more involved some mundane things are like um, you know my morning coffee is like I can't set the coffee maker to start at 6 a.m. automatically and prep it the night before like I gotta gotta wake up gotta set my stove up put the propane in boil the water, put it in my French press, wait like five minutes, and then it's like a whole process. Um, and same with like tea and even like cooking. Um, yeah, which is, is kind of nice. Like I'm not really over that honeymoon phase yet where I'm like annoyed by it. Like it's still like, it's a nice, like almost meditative process just to like make a cup of tea. Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying that so far, but I imagine I'll get to a point where I'm like, oh, okay, this is gonna suck. <laughs> Minimalism is definitely like, it's something that I admired, but never really indulged in until I had to downsize. Um, but yeah, I was already in the process of like removing a lot of things from my life that I don't need. Um, you know, things that don't spark joy, like Marie Kondo would say. Um, yeah, and then moving in here is like, definitely, you know, you kind of, go nuclear a little bit. My personal philosophy in life is to just kind of uh, dive dive into it. Like, um, you know, do, do the thing you wanna do. Um, you know, I, I'm a very like impulsive person. I always have been. Um, and I grew up in a place where there wasn't really a lot of room to, to grow and, and develop. You know, it's a very small town. Um, which I, I love dearly and the people in it, but um, you know, I just eventually couldn't do it anymore. I had to move across the country to you know the West Coast and see what life is like outside of a bubble. Um, and you know, I've always been yeah this very impulsive person, but I also have uh, a lot of things like stopping me. Like I have um, you know like anxiety and 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 depression and things that um, they they stop you from from doing these things and doing the things that you you want to do. Um, and you know what I've learned over many years is um, to just kind of not not listen to that voice in your head that gives you all these reasons um, to to not pursue something. Like I think um, when you're considering any kind of decision, I think why not is a much more productive question than why, because when you really sit and think about it, like realistically, what like why why not? <laughs> you know, um, and usually there's. There's either a really good answer and you realize it's a bad idea or there's no answer at all and you just do it. That's, you know, that's, that's why I live in a van. <laughs> um, yeah, so just, uh, you know, ask, ask yourself why not and, and just, uh, just dive into stuff. I've always regretted not doing something more than I've regretted a consequence. If you're still like being a good person, like, yeah, it's okay to, to do some things for yourself and, and to explore possibilities in life. Like, I think we all need to do that. Yeah, if you want to keep keep in touch uh, you can follow me on instagram at carly bray jepson it's uh, just like the singer but there's a b in there if you would like to be featured on different media there's a form you can fill out to be on the podcast or to have your van toured and if you're interested in watching more alternative dwelling tours like this we upload every single sunday so hit subscribe and new van life and chill podcasts every thursday thanks everyone for watching